version control with Git has become an industry standard. Almost everyone is using it, not just the software development industry, but also amateur developers, students, and even professors. So it has become important to understand what actually happens when we version our code. So in this video, we'll be detailing each and every step of the Git lifecycle or the Git workflow. And also guys, if you're interested, Great Learning has come up with this amazing initiative called Great Learning Academy, where you can register for more than 80 plus free courses and earn a certificate when you complete the course. So guys, now let us begin this video. So let's understand how the code flows within the Git system itself. From so far what we have learned, you can probably deduce that you will write the code on your system and that that code will be pushed onto the distributed repository or the cloud, which is exactly what is happening in Git. But there are a few steps that we didn't mention. Now let's start talking about those steps. So the first step is, you know, assigning a working directory. So first a working directory is assigned. So this working directory is basically the location where all of the working code will be stored. And this is where the user will be working from. So suppose in your system, you create a folder called project folder and you start working from that project folder, then that project folder, like you store all of your code, like index.html, index.js in that project folder, then that project folder is your working directory and you have assigned it. So like there's no official step, but you know, you are assigning it as a working directory. Then comes the next step in this life cycle that is initialization now this is a step that you know you will be doing using git so once you are you know you have assigned the working directory the next step is to initialize that working directory so to initialize you know once you initialize that directory you basically tell git that this directory or that folder called project is now to be regarded as a local repository which can later be pushed onto the distributed cloud whenever there is a need so it's basically telling it that this folder is the folder that I want to work with. And please keep a track of all the files that are staged and unstaged. This is when Gits basically start tracking all the files in the directory. So then comes the next step, the next step that is staging. So once the initialization has been completed, the work on the code can begin. All the changes that, you know, um, like addition or deletions are made. So w once you've made those changes to your code, right, you already might have some code like index.html. You make those changes in that code and one, then you go ahead and stage that code. So you will basically be working on the code between initialization and staging. So staging is basically telling uh, Git that, well, what are all the changes made to a specific file? So you can stage a specific file and then Git will basically automatically identify what were the changes made to this file over compared to the previous version. This is when Git, uh, so this is when Git starts checking for all the changes that have been made. So this is staging. So once you've staged, you go to the next step. So in the local storage, right, you're going to be committing. So once the work on the code is done, once you stage the file, the files are then committed. So committing basically means that you're saving the changes that you've made. So suppose in that index.html file, you made a change where you added some header tag and some paragraph tags, and you want to save those changes onto your local system. Now you can just control S it, but to inform Git about the saving that is done, you need to commit them. So once you commit them using Git's command, that save will be changed as a specific commit in the local storage. Now that you've done all the work, it's in the local storage. The next step is to push it to GitHub or the local or the uh, distributed cloud. So then the code is pushed from the local storage to the cloud or the distributed repository. With Git, it's GitHub where the code is stored. So this is the life cycle of code within Git. So it goes from working directory where you assign one working directory and you start creating all the files inside that working directory. Then you initialize that folder slash directory and then you start working on that code. Do whatever you want, make all the changes. And then once you're done making all the changes, stage whatever file you want. If you have three files in the system and you only want to push two of those files out of those three, then you stage only those two files. And once you stage those two files, all the changes are tracked by Git. And once you've you know done staging, you can go ahead and commit that code. So once you commit that code, all the changes are saved on the local system. They, they are stored in, you know, like those track of those changes is stored in a commit. And basically then you go ahead and push the code to the GitHub. Now the code can be later be pulled on to make newer changes. And this whole cycle will be, you know, it will start repeating again. So this is the life cycle. 
So guys, that was our video on Git workflow or Git lifecycle. I hope you guys got something out of it and I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about Git, we have a, a lot of other videos that you guys can check out in the description or in the annotations. Thank you so much for watching guys.